All right. Good evening and welcome to Congressman G.K. Butterfield's informational webinar on the American Rescue Plan. I'm Kyle Parker, Congressman Butterfield's Chief of Staff, and I'm delighted to see so many of you have taken time out of your busy schedules to join Congressman Butterfield this evening. In just a few moments, Congressman Butterfield will share details about the recently enacted American Rescue Plan Act and all the resources that are coming to North Carolina and the 1st Congressional District. Following his remarks, Congressman Butterfield will share well, excuse me, we'll answer as many of your submitted questions as time allows. First, let's do a little housekeeping. The webinar will last one hour and end at 7 p.m. During Congressman Butterfield's remarks, we'll split the screen between him and some informational slides. You have the ability to make either side larger or smaller on your screen by clicking the dividing line and sliding it right or left. We'll now move in, excuse me, um, yeah. With that information out of the way, uh, I'll turn it over to Congressman Butterfield. Sir, it's all yours. Thank you very much. And let me say good afternoon to all of you. And thank you. Thank you so very much for joining this webinar this afternoon. Hope you are having a good day. Hope you're having a good week. Hope your Easter was enjoyable, even though we're living, still living through a pandemic. Uh, it is my joy to be your representative. I've represented the 1st Congressional District now for 16 long years, and it's been my joy to be your eyes, your ears, and your voice in Washington. The webinar today is entitled, Help is Here. Help is Here. These are some very, very difficult times, as all of you certainly know, uh, unprecedented times. We have all felt the impact of the pandemic over the past year. Our children's education has been interrupted and we know that so painfully well. Our neighbors, our family members have lost their jobs and they have struggled to make ends meet. Our schools have had to close, churches have closed, businesses uh, have closed and many of them are struggling every day. Sadly, many of us have lost loved ones we have lost friends to COVID-19. I have, and I know you have as well. But I'm here today as your federal representative to tell you that help is here. The American Rescue Plan, which was signed into law nearly one month ago on March 11th, as I recall, uh, it was championed by congressional Democrats. It was championed by our new president, President Joe Biden. President Biden and congressional Democrats are putting shots in the arms. That's what's really important, shots in the arms. We're putting money in, in, in the pockets of the American people. We're trying to put children back in school and put people back into their jobs. And so tonight, tonight I want to walk you through the American Rescue Plan and highlight some of the programs and resources in it that will help Eastern North Carolina. And I want to thank my staff, all of them, for the role that they played in pulling the webinar together this evening. They are incredibly talented and uh, incredibly uh, supportive of the work that we, that we do. Uh, the gentleman that led off the program was named Kyle Parker. Kyle is my chief of staff, and, and he supervises a very large staff of individuals. He is based in the Washington, D.C. office. My other capable staff members, some of them are on the call, Caitlin. Uh, Van Sant, who is my legislative director, uh, Reginald Spade, who many of you know here in Eastern North Carolina. Reginald is my district director and, and is so faithful to, to our work. And A.J. Malikta, uh, who is doing the technical stuff this evening, and so far, so good. But let's talk about shots in the arms. You, you hear that on television every day. You hear uh, President Biden talk about his goal of getting 200 uh, a million people vaccinated within 100 days and we, we, we have reached that milestone and we're getting there and we're doing even more. But the American Rescue Plan that we recently passed, this thing invests 20 billion, that's billion, $20 billion in a nationally coordinated vaccination program. The plan will ensure that we have enough vaccines for every single American. And we're doing that by investing in research. We're investing in development and manufacturing and distribution 
of the vaccines. These funds included in the, in the American Rescue Plan and the aggressive emphasis that Biden has placed on quickly distributing these vaccines across the country has allowed the president to move up his deadline for all adults to be eligible for vaccines from May 1st. That was the original deadline. Uh, that was the original goal. Now it is April 19th. Just as importantly, the American Rescue Plan provides funds. It provides money to ensure that vaccines are equitably distributed. Black communities, brown communities, minority communities often bear the brunt of disease due to the lasting impact of systemic racism. COVID-19 has been no different. Since the very beginning of the pandemic, it has been clear that while COVID-19 affects us all, it does not affect us all equally. The policies of, past, of the past administration, the Trump administration, only exacerbated this by failing to course correct when the data first showed how skewed the impact of COVID-19 is. The American Rescue Plan will ensure that vaccines are quickly and equitably distributed, giving all Americans access to the life-saving vaccine. I was also pleased that additional funding for community health centers was included in the plan. Two weeks ago, I announced that health centers in the first district were awarded over $45 million. That's a big deal, my friends over $45 million in American Rescue Plan funding. Those health centers are all over Eastern North Carolina and throughout my congressional district. They're up in Bertie County, the Bertie County Rural Health Association, the Carolina Family Health Centers Incorporated, Gateway Community Health Centers, Goshen Health Center, Green County, Metropolitan, which is in Williamston and, and Beaufort County, OIC over in Rocky Mountain, Roanoke Shawan Community Health Center and the Rural Health Group Incorporated. These health centers have received much needed funding and help is on the way. Throughout the pandemic, community health centers have answered the call to serve their communities. I love community health centers. They are doing great work and I want you to appreciate them. Community health centers can use this funding to support and expand programs for vaccination, for testing and treatment. This investment will help increase operational capacity beyond the current pandemic as well, ensuring that community health centers will in the future continue to be there for you and others who need their services. Finally, the American Rescue Plan includes funds to promote the importance of getting COVID-19, getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Vaccinations will only restore us to a sense of normal if enough people take them. Please, please, for that to happen, people have to trust. They have to believe that the vaccines are safe and effective. I'm here to tell you tonight that the vaccines are safe. Please believe me. The vaccines are safe and they are effective. There are currently three vaccines on the market that have been approved by the FDA and they kind of work in different ways, but the best shot is the shot, shot that, it, that goes into your arm. I personally have received the COVID-19 vaccine. I encourage each of you to get it as soon as you possibly can. Now, enough about the vaccines. Let's talk about money. We all know money is important. Money in pockets. I don't have to tell you that the economic impact of COVID-19 has absolutely devastated families, devastated businesses all across the country and right here in Eastern North Carolina. The, the calls that I get, the calls that my staff get, gets are absolutely heartbreaking. To deliver immediate relief to working families, that are bearing the brunt of the crisis, the American Rescue Plan provided eligible recipients economic impact payments of up to $1,400 per person. 
Hope you've already gotten it. This follows the $600 payment enacted in December, and it fulfills our promise, our meaning Democrats, our promise to put $2,000 into the pockets of the American people. Use the IRS tool. It's called Get My Payment. Please do that if you have access to the internet. Use the IRS tool, and it's called Get My Payment. Use this tool to track your $1,400 payment and contact my office if you're having trouble receiving your payment. My wonderful staff will be delighted to work with you. Let me talk with you about unemployment assistance. COVID has caused the highest unemployment rate in our country since data started being collected in 1948. North Carolina's unemployment rate has doubled. Yes, our rate here in North Carolina has doubled since the pandemic began. Part-time workers, women, racial and ethnic minorities all experience higher rates of unemployment than the average. We know that. The American Rescue Plan extends important pandemic-related unemployment benefits so, so that more than 20 million workers can pay their bills. That's a big deal. Unemployment assistance was extended from 50 weeks, and I remember us having this debate, was extended from 50 weeks to up to 73 weeks. That's through September 6th, right after Labor Day. It also extends emergency unemployment compensation from 24 weeks to 53 weeks. Critically, the American Rescue Plan supports workers by providing an additional $300, 300 additional dollars in weekly benefits through September 6th. And remember this, the first $10,000 of these benefits received in last year, 2020, are tax-free. Speaker Pelosi, before we left Washington, told us to make sure that the American people know this. $10,200 of these benefits are tax-free. Let's talk about housing before we run out of time. President Biden and Vice President Harris have made housing relief a top priority. And that shows in the American Rescue Plan, 19% of renters in North Carolina. Let's round it off and say 20%. That's one out of five. One out of five renters in North Carolina are behind on their rent. I hope and pray that you are not in that category, but one in five are behind on, on their rent. These are our friends, our church people, our coworkers, our, our family members, people that we know. One out of five are behind on their rent. Some may tell you that they are, others may keep it a secret, but they, many are. 35% of adults say they cannot keep up with their expenses. Let's just say one out of three. One out of three adults cannot keep up with their normal household expenses. This is an emergency. The U.S. Treasury will administer more than $21 billion in emergency rental assistance, $10 billion to help homeowners who are behind on their mortgage and utility payments. The American Rescue Plan also provides $5 billion in emergency housing vouchers for those experiencing homelessness. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about nutrition. We all care about nutrition. COVID-19 has drastically increased food insecurity. 30 million adults, 12 million precious children may not have access to nutritious food because of the pandemic. Isn't that sad? Our goal our goal is to end food insecurity, and the American Rescue Plan works toward that goal, and it does it in a few ways. Number one, it extends access to EBT, electronic benefits transfer. 
It extends those benefits through the duration of the public health emergency, including through the summer, to ensure that families with school age children have access to nutritious foods. The American Rescue Plan extends the 15% increase in SNAP benefits. That's, you know what SNAP benefits are? Food stamps. We now call it SNAP. 15% increase in SNAP benefits through September 30th. This is roughly an additional $28 per person. WIC, women, infants, and children, if you don't know, we call it WIC. WIC received an increase of $880 million to help ensure that moms and babies have a fresh and healthy foods. We've got to end poverty in America. And that's something I've talked about every day since I've been in Congress. News reporters ask me from time to time, what do I want my legacy to be? And I say that if I can have any part of ending poverty in America, then that should be my legacy. That is what I want to see in my lifetime. I want to end poverty in America. This plan makes an historic change to the child tax credit for low income Americans with children, supporting 27 million children. And the experts are telling us that this is going to cut child poverty in half. I want that to soak in for just a minute. We're going to create, we are creating a child tax credit for low income families so that we can cut childhood poverty in half. The child tax credit is now available to children and families with low income, incomes, or even no incomes. Before the American Rescue Plan, almost half of all African-American children and Latino children were unable to receive the full credit because their family's income was too low. Just imagine that. It was too low, it was said. Well, in addition to expanding eligibility, the maximum credit now has been raised from $2,000 to $3,000 per child over age six and $3,600 per child under the age of six. The American Rescue Plan also extends the credit to 17 year olds, over 2 million, North Carolina families will benefit from these changes. Wow, that's a big deal. Two million North Carolina families will benefit from these changes. We have 10 million people in this state. Two million will benefit. In total, the changes to the child tax credit will lift 137,000 children in North Carolina out of poverty. That's life-changing. That is transformational. That's something I have, have, have longed to see in our country. We are not completely there yet, but we are well on our way to eliminating poverty in our great country. More than 600,000 workers who don't have children in this state will also benefit through an improved earned income tax credit. The American Rescue Plan raises the credit from about $450 to about $1,500. It raises the income cap to at least $21,000 per year. And it expands the eligibility to 19 to 24 year olds who are not full-time students and, and those over 65. Many individuals who qualify for this relief are our frontline workers. Now, I know you may not be absorbing every word that I'm saying, but I hope you get the big picture. The big picture is that we've created a reform of the tax code, we've created tax credits, we've done many things that will be able to help low income families, particularly those with children. Our children, those in school, for many parents, one of the most stressful aspects of the pandemic is worry 
in Wilson, we call it worration, is worry over their school age children missing out on in-person learning. They're worried about falling, their children falling behind academically. They're worried about not being able to socialize, their children not being able to socialize with their peers at school. Parents have also had to take on the added role of teacher to make sure that their children are getting the most out of remote learning. But that has also limited their earning potential and it has added plenty of stress to the family. The American Rescue Plan provided $130 billion to state education departments to get schools open quickly and safely, to keep them open once they're open and to make up for lost time. School districts in my congressional district, in our congressional district, the first district, school districts are expected to receive a whopping $348 million to achieve these goals. There are 15 counties in my congressional, our congressional district, don't like to say my, our congressional district, 15 counties, and those school systems are getting nearly $350 million to get the job done. Let's talk about people and jobs. The American Rescue Plan provides crucial support to help the hardest hit small businesses to keep their doors open, especially those owned by entrepreneurs from racial and ethnic backgrounds that have experienced systemic discrimination. Discrimination with, here's the way it goes. They're going to get made, get made they're going to have made available 15 billion dollars. That's why this package is so expensive. 15 billion dollars in EIDL grants. What does that mean? Economic injury disaster loan grants. We've appropriated 15 billion dollars for these grants. And they can go to small businesses, they can go to nonprofits, they can go to other qualified entities. Here's another one. We've appropriated $7 billion in additional funding for the PPP program. You've heard about PPP, Paycheck Protection Program. It got started real off to a bad start under President Trump, but we've made some changes to it now. And we've added $7 billion in funding to the PPP program. And we've extended the program now until May 31st with more groups eligible to receive loans. We've also appropriated $28 billion to revitalize restaurants, food and beverage establishments. We've appropriated $16 billion, a little bit more than $16 billion for the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program to help groups like movie theaters and other entertainment venues. The grant application for this program actually opened today. We've also put out, uh, legislated additional resources to help small and disadvantaged businesses navigate and access COVID relief programs. The plan, the plan also provides crucial resources to protect the jobs of first responders. I hope some of you are first responders. I hope you're listening and watching. We, we, help is on the way to first responders, to frontline public health workers, to our teachers. Thank God for our teachers and our frontline workers, our transit workers, and other essential workers who we all depend on every day and so often take them for granted. State and local governments, yes, North Carolina, Edgecombe County, Pitt County, Martin County, Wayne County, local governments, have been forced to lay off nearly one and a half million public employees due to the pandemic. Now that's across the country. A million and a half have been laid off, either working for state or local government. With the American Rescue Plan, economists, these is what my staff knows, I call them the smart people. 
economists estimate that we can bring this economy, we can bring the American economy back to where it was in 2019, we can bring it back to near full employment in about one year. Remember unemployment was down at historic lows. We can get back there within a year. Without the American Rescue Plan, the Congressional Budget Office tells us that it would take at least three years before employment returns to where it was in 2019. Let's talk about state and local relief. I mentioned it a moment ago, and I want to drill down on that for just a minute. I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm going to look at my watch to make sure I'm not running out of time because I want to leave time for you to ask questions. State and local. It's a big conversation in Washington. State and local. The American Rescue Plan also provides critical support to states and local communities. That's governmental units so they can best protect their communities from the virus and get back to normal. In total, counties and cities, towns and school districts in the first district are getting ready to receive $600 million in direct fiscal relief. And we insisted in writing this legislation that not a penny of that money will be peeled off at the state level before it gets to the local level. The money will get directly to our school districts, our towns, our cities, and our counties throughout North Carolina. $600 million in direct relief. This is not something that we are just thinking about. We have already done it. The money is in the pipeline and it's on the way. Now, before I answer questions and I, I've Talked a little bit longer than I planned, but uh, I feel like I'm talking to a, a good audience. Uh, I can't see all of you, but I, I know you're there. Uh, but before I answer the questions, I'd like to share a bit more about some of the other provisions of the plan that will benefit our district. I, I'm trying to brag a little bit today because I'm so proud of it. This is why we've been working so hard since that fearful day of January 6th, and we'll talk about that on another day. With the American Rescue Plan, Democrats have seized the opportunity to deliver on our promise to expand health care coverage, affordable coverage, comprehensive coverage, health care coverage to the millions of people who were left behind when their Republican governors and state legislatures refused to expand the Medicaid program after we passed Obamacare. Before the American Rescue Plan was passed a month ago, if a state chose to expand their Medicaid program, we, the federal government, would pay 90% of the costs. So for every dollar that was needed for a low-income patient, we would pay 90 cents. Uh, under the American Rescue Plan, states that expand Medicaid now will receive a five percentage point increase to their base federal matching rate for two years after expansion. We have been fighting in North Carolina for Medicaid expansion. Governor Cooper has been fighting for it and we have been unable to convince the legislature to expand Medicaid. The Medicaid program started in 1965 under the Democratic administration of President Lyndon B. Johnson, but it only, uh, it, only families with dependent children and individuals with disabilities have been entitled to Medicaid funding. Those with renal disease, for example, can get Medicaid funding. But if it's a hardworking, um, low income, healthy adult without children, then Medicaid did not apply to them. They could not get Medicaid. And so we've been, been trying to expand the Medicaid program. So those healthy adults who are low income, who have no children, can qualify for Medicaid, and we are still trying to incentivize the states to do it. This generous incentive that we just passed will provide states that have refused to expand, like North Carolina, it's not Governor Cooper's fault, he wants to expand it, uh, but it has uh, provided incentives uh, with, for, for states that refuse to expand with much needed money that they can use to combat the pandemic 
They can also expand Medicaid coverage and they can even improve the Medicaid program. Under this plan, North Carolina will receive, would receive if, if the legislature will buy into this, North Carolina would receive $1.7 billion in new federal funding if they expand Medicaid, freeing up over $1 billion in new federal funds to be reinvested in critical state programs and programs in our communities. My friends, the importance of Medicaid cannot be overstated. And I hope those of you who live in, in the first congressional district, I hope you understand and appreciate the absolute importance of Medicaid for low-income families. Investment in Medicaid is an investment in our future. Medicaid beneficiaries have improved health. They do better in school, the children do. They have higher earning potential than their uninsured peers. As we all know, Medicaid expansion does not just bring health benefits to the people, it also brings economic growth. It brings opportunity to the state. In North Carolina, Medicaid expansion would not only provide coverage <clears throat> for more than 600 thousand people, <clears throat> I want to say that again, 600,000 people would get coverage, but it would also create over 37,000 jobs, additional jobs by this time next year. It would increase state and county tax revenues by over $600 million. And I know some county commissioners and city council members and mayors may be on this call, and you know how critically important it is for, for your governmental unit to get increased tax revenues because you can do more. You don't have to lay off uh, people who are essential personnel in your communities. This is exactly the economic boost that rural communities really, really need. I'm so pleased that the American Rescue Plan included this generous incentive. And I joined the governor in calling for the North Carolina legislature to expand Medicaid. Let's do it once and let's do it permanently and let's do it as soon as we possibly can. And so now we are ready for questions and answers. Uh, I want to mention uh, two very important websites as we go to the Q&A portion. First, information for how to apply for assistance, how to access services, or how to get other help. Let me tell you how that can happen, how you can find out information. For those of you who have the internet, and if you don't have the internet, please connect with someone who does. You might wanna write this down if, if you don't have uh, uh, any way to remember it. www.nc.gov, that's G-O-V, gov www.nc.gov slash, I mean, you know, that, that bar that goes from left to right, slash COVID-19. I'm going to repeat it one more time. www.nc.gov slash COVID-19. Now, information about the American Rescue Plan and the other COVID-19 legislation that we passed last year in Congress can be found on my website. Here we go again, www.butterfield.house.gov slash COVID, C-O-V-I-D hyphen 19. I'm going to try that again. www.butterfield.house.gov slash COVID hyphen 19. But if you're not sure, if you're just not sure where to go for help, that's what we are here for. Please call my office. My staff can and will help you. I hope this overview has provided you with more insight on the American Rescue Plan and, and how it will benefit you and your community. It is my honor to serve you in Congress 
And I'm, I'm overjoyed that you stayed with me throughout this program. I'm looking at the number of people on the call now. You have stayed with me from start to finish, and I thank you so very much. Uh, it is now, uh, it will, I will now turn this back over to my chief of staff, uh, Brother Cal Parker, who will read some of the questions that have been submitted. Thank you very much, Congressman Butterfield. We'll now move into the question and answer portion of tonight's webinar. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions. We'll try to get through as many questions as possible, but if we're unable to get to yours this evening, Congressman Butterfield's staff will send you an emailed response in the next few days. Now to questions. Okay, the first question comes from Kathy Anahofsky, and she asks, is there funding to make broadband more affordable? Thank you so very much, Kathy. From a Husky, I think you said, Kyle, that's up in Hereford County. And Hereford County, one of uh, very important counties in my congressional district. Her question is, is there funding to make broadband more affordable? I think you said. Okay. The answer is yes. Uh, and, and we're going to appropriate even more, even more as we go forward. Access to affordable broadband is absolutely important to Hereford County. It's absolutely important to every community in Eastern North Carolina. The American Rescue Plan included several provisions that relate to broadband. It established a, a um, homeowner assistance fund that will help with financial hardships that are connected with the pandemic. And these funds, these funds, the Homeowner Assistance Fund, I remember that it was HAF, Homeowner Assistance Fund, these funds can be used for expenses. They have to qualify, but these funds can be used for expenses, including internet access. This legislation, as I recall, also included seven or seven and a half billion dollars for an emergency connectivity fund that will help our students, our precious students with, with e-learning, we call it. States and local communities can also use their, 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 their funding that we've given them to invest in broadband for their communities. Um, and so help is on the way. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Help is on the way. At the end of of last year, Congress created an emergency broadband benefit to help households, to help families pay for internet service during the pandemic. As I recall, households that, that, get, uh, that participate in this thing will receive a $50 discount on their monthly bill. Uh, they can qualify for a $100 discount on a computer or a laptop uh, or, or what you call it, or a tablet. Uh, to qualify for this program, at least one member of the household must be eligible for certain uh, support programs. An example of that would be Lifeline, or, or even if the kids are getting, getting reduced lunches at school, free or, free or reduced lunches at school. The FCC, we call it the Federal Communications Commission, will be launching the program at the end of the month. Uh, and you can get more information by going to the FCC website. My recollection is www.fcc.gov slash broadband. I don't know if you put it on the screen, Kyle, but it's broadband benefit. www.fcc.gov slash broadband benefit. In the future, and I know I'm real chatty about this, but I, I care so passionately about broadband. In the future, we're gonna pass an infrastructure bill I want you to pay attention to this. Infrastructure will be debated on the floor of the House and Senate very soon. And in that, we're going to include $100 billion so that every household in America has access to high-speed broadband. That is going to be a game changer. So thank you, Kathy. Sorry to give you such a long answer, but that's, that's the answer to your question, I hope. Thank you, sir. All right, now we'll go uh, to a question from Angela from Plymouth. And Angela asks, does the plan help families afford childcare? Did you say Angela's from Pequimans? 
Oh, sir, from Plymouth. Plymouth. Hello, yes, Angela from Plymouth, uh, Washington County, to be exact. Uh, thank you so very much for asking the question about child care. Uh, that's a conversation that we are having in Congress. And now the Democrats are the majority in the House and in the Senate and a Democratic president. You're going to hear more and more discussion about making child care more affordable. The answer to your question is yes. The American Rescue Plan included pretty close to $40 billion in child care funding for, for child care providers. Some of you on this call may operate daycare centers. You may have a home daycare center. We've provided nearly $40 billion for funding. It's not total funding. It won't fund your entire operation, but it will help. This includes $15 billion to the child care and development block grant that goes to the states, $24 billion for eligible child care providers. North Carolina uh, will receive uh, a half a billion dollars, about $500 million in expanded child care assistance through the child care block grant fund that will help essential workers, help them afford child care regardless of how much money they make. This will allow a greater share of lower income families to access this assistance. Thank you for as asking that question. Thank you, sir. All right, the next question comes from Wilson and it comes from Mr. Kelly. And he asked, will funding be available for public housing authorities to create new affordable housing? Well, let me thank you, Mr. Kelly, for that question. I was on a Zoom call this morning with the Wilson Housing Authority, and I know how passionate they are about providing uh, public housing, uh, affordable public housing to the citizens of, of our community. And I say our because I live in Wilson. I have lived here all of my life. I'm actually in Wilson right now. Uh, the answer, uh, Kelly, is yes. Uh, this, this legislation contains $50 billion worth of housing support, $50 billion. Of that, there is a dedicated pot of money, $5 billion for home investment partnerships to create housing and services for people who are experiencing or are at risk of being homeless. I'm gonna say a word about homelessness. I think I may have said it uh, earlier today to another group. I've known all of my life that we've had a homeless problem in America. But now that I've been in Congress and I've been able to travel the country from city to city, town to town, let me tell you that homelessness is far beyond any of our imaginations. I've been to Denver, I've been to Phoenix, I've been to Oakland, San Francisco, I've been on the East Coast, I've been to, 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 to the mid part of America. People, thousands of our fellow Americans are sleeping under bridges. They're sleeping in little tents. They are wrapped up in blankets on the side of the highway at night, even in the wintertime. Many of these have school age children who are part of their families and the children are living in tents. They have their little bicycles and tricycles right next to the tents. And so we in Congress are no longer going to ignore homelessness. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, my dear friend who chairs the Financial Services Committee from Los Angeles has been preaching about this every day since I've been in Congress. And finally, we've got some money in the pipeline, $5 billion to help those who are homeless, and those who are at risk of homelessness. This money, this money, Mr. Kelly, can, can be used for rental assistance. It can be used for affordable housing. It can be used for what we call wraparound services, supportive services, and, and the development of housing shelters, emergency shelters. Some of your churches may want to engage in providing housing and emergency shelters. That is a very good question. Thank you for letting me get it out because I've, I've wanted to share these stories about homelessness to, to groups over the last year, but 
I've been confined because of COVID, but thank you for letting me get that out. I hope you all, all of us appreciate the gravity of the problem that we have in America with homelessness. And it's right here in Eastern North Carolina. It's not just in Oakland, California, where I saw three or four blocks of homeless people, but it's right here in the Rocky Mount in Greenville and Tarboro in Goldsboro and Snow Hill and all around. We have a homeless problem in Eastern North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, we're gonna go now to Rocky Mount. Mary Ann in Rocky Mount asks, how will the American Rescue Plan impact underserved youth? All right, let's talk about our youth now. Now, Rocky Mount is one of my favorite cities. It straddles the line now. It's in Nash and Edgecombe County. So I'm gonna assume that Mary Ann is uh, in one of those counties. I'm not gonna pick which one, but uh, thank you, Mary Ann, for, for that question. You're asking about underserved youth. There, there are many provisions that impact you. These include the expansion of the child tax credit. I talked about that in my remarks. It's gonna cut childhood poverty in half. Uh, but, but this bill also includes $800 million for wraparound services. And those of you who are involved with social services, you have a firsthand knowledge of this, what, what wraparound means. It means those services that can, that can encompass and, and provide support uh, for, for people who are in need. $800 million we put in that thing for wraparound services for our youth who are experiencing homelessness so that they can fully participate in school, so they can uh, benefit from earned income tax credit. Uh, there's $18 billion in there for emergency financial aid to higher education students, college students who are at risk for hunger or homelessness. Thank you for asking that question. And, and we have been, we've been briefed and we know that there are children who sit in classrooms every day in America who leave school and go back to a shelter. This must not happen in the United States of America. Thank you, sir. We've got two questions now from uh, down the street in Wilson from Lula. Lula asks, is there a provision included in the American Rescue Plan regarding student loan debt forgiveness? Okay, you didn't tell me which Lula it is in Wilson. I know about three Lulas in Wilson, but hello Lula. Thank you so much for the question on student debt forgiveness. We get asked that all the time and I wanna shoot straight with you. Um, the answer is no. The American Rescue Plan did change the tax code for student loan forgiveness, making it tax-free until 2025. But unfortunately, it did not include a provision that will forgive student debt. President Biden, some of you may know, you, you saw it during the campaign, you've seen it since he's been in office, uh, has previously indicated his support for forgiving up to $10,000 in federal loans per student borrower, not the entire loan because so many have loans much greater than 10,000. But President Biden is talking about forgiving up to 10,000 uh, per borrower. This week, the president ordered the Department of Education to do a survey, to conduct a review to determine if, if he has the legal authority to forgive more than 10,000, uh, whether he can forgive up to 50,000, for example, per borrower through an executive order and not have to come to Congress for permission. So we're gonna wait for, for that answer to be forthcoming. Cal, Thank these you, are pretty, pretty good questions. Uh, keep <laughs> them coming until okay. we run out of time. <laughs> okay, we got, a, we got one more from uh, Lula. And she asked, will there be a fourth stimulus payment as there are rumors to that effect. Now you're giving Lula a lot of time here. I've got to check on this Lula and see who she is, but thank you, Lula, you, you are very thoughtful. Um, you want to know about a fourth stimulus? Yeah, we do too. We, we're asking that question uh, because we, we, we need a fourth stimulus. I know this thing is getting very expensive. Uh, some of the critics are saying that we cannot afford it. I say we cannot afford not to do it. There are a lot of, lot of different opinions on this thing. La last month, 
uh, as I recall, 20 Democratic senators. I'm in the House now, I'm not in the Senate. Uh, last month, over 20 Democratic senators sent a letter to the president asking him to include uh, what we call recurring direct payments in his Build Back Better package. And many of the smart people, the economists, I told you that earlier, I call economists smart people. Uh, many of these economists have argued that recurring payments are the best way to get our economy back on track. That's kind of expensive. Uh, it is my hope that we can include uh, this or something similar to this in the next large package. I think it will be very difficult to include another round of stimulus payments in the infrastructure package. And I know I'm really getting detailed now, but there's a difference between infrastructure and, and the rescue payment. Uh, it is my hope that the American Rescue Plan and the $4 trillion that we may invest in infrastructure and human capital will, will, will diminish the need for additional stimulus funds. So I want you to, to, to watch uh, as we begin to debate the, the infrastructure package. The president went on TV the other day and he said that he wants to, to Congress to come together in a bipartisan way, Democrats and Republicans. He wants us to come together and pass about $2.4 trillion in capital infrastructure. What do I mean by that? What does he mean by that? He means a whole lot of stuff. He means roads and bridges and highways and schools and recreation centers and high-speed broadband. And the list goes on and on. Those are capital projects. We have bridges that we travel over. We have bridges that are falling in the water or near are, are almost ready to collapse. That's what the engineers are telling us. We saw one years ago in Minneapolis, St. Paul, just right in the middle of the day, just fell to the ground. That was because of, of infrastructure uh, uh, problems. And we want to upgrade infrastructure, the physical infrastructure in our bridges and our highways. Uh, I was talking to uh, the city manager in Wilson, for example, yesterday, and he was telling me some of the infrastructure in Wilson, the water and sewer pipes, over 100 years old. We've got to upgrade our infrastructure, and that's what the president is talking about. But the president also is going to be rolling out another $2 trillion. I don't want to get ahead of the president, uh, but it's, it's not a secret. Uh, the president's going to be announcing another $2 trillion piece of legislation that will invest in human infrastructure. In other words, to help our senior citizens stay at home when they're in need of care so their children and grandchildren can go to work. Creating senior centers and child centers and recreation centers and, and after school programs and, and programs such as this. This is human infrastructure. So we're gonna do capital infrastructure, hopefully. We're gonna do human infrastructure, hopefully. And both of these together are going to exceed, exceed $4 trillion. Now, before you get excited about how do we pay for it, let me tell you, we have a mechanism to pay for it. We're talking about it. I'll tell you about the corporate tax rate. Under the Republicans, the corporate tax rate, that's how much tax corporations are supposed to pay, went from 21%, excuse me, went from 35% down to 21%. Wow. That means all of many of these big, big corporations, their tax liability was cut in half. Some of them are getting by with paying no taxes. And why is that important? It's important because it's taking money off the table. This is money that we can use to invest in the American people. And so what the president wants to do is he's tempted to, to say, let's take it back to 35%. But he's trying to reach a middle ground, a sweet spot, if you will, to increase the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. That will bring in a lot of revenue. We also need to look at multinational corporations who, who, who do business in different countries, and they're not paying their fair share of taxes in the United States. We want to revise the tax code to get them in line so they can pay more taxes in the United States. That will put more money on the table. And for those people who make more than $400,000 a year, 
they can expect to see their tax liability go up just a little bit. If you make a lot of money, you need to pay your fair share of taxes. If you make less than $400,000 a year, and I would guess that most if not all of the people on this call, including me, are under that threshold, our taxes will not go up one single dollar. So if anyone tells you that we cannot afford another $4 trillion in infrastructure spending, tell them, yes, we can. We're gonna do it because we're gonna revise the tax code and make people who can afford to pay more taxes to pay these taxes so that they can help their fellow Americans be rescued and recovered. That's what we're going to be doing. Thank you for the question. Thank you, sir. And um, I think we'll do one more question. Uh, this one coming from Rocky Mount. Um, and uh, the question is, uh, and this is from Marianne, um, she asks, is there a chance of a permanent SNAP increase? Okay, SNAP is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, better known as food stamps. Uh, I hope so. I hope so, Marianne. Uh, the American Rescue Plan extended the 15% increase in SNAP through September 30th. President Biden has made it clear that he wants to end hunger in America. We all do. And he has directed the Department of Agriculture, which oversees the SNAP program, to examine the adequacy of the benefits that, that SNAP recipients were receiving before the pandemic. Carol, it looks like we're getting pretty close to seven o'clock. Do we have time for one more or have we run out of time? Well, I think um, what we'll do, um, I'll remind everybody, we'll go ahead and close it out. I'll remind everybody, uh, obviously we didn't get to everybody's question, uh, but uh, your staff will uh, email uh, answers uh, to those questions in the, in the next few days. Um, if tonight's webinar prompted uh, a question you'd like to have it answered, please send uh, an email to us at nco1outreach at mail.house.gov. Again, that's nco1outreach at mail.house.gov. Uh, or, of course, you can call our, uh, our office in Wilson at 252-237-9816 or our office in D.C., and that's 202-225-3101. Um, Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. I'm being told by Reginald that we're running out of time. We have about 90 seconds left, and I wanted to get the last word. Uh, let me just sincerely thank all of you for joining us this evening for this webinar. I guess you can tell I have enjoyed it. I hope you have enjoyed it. This is my job description. This is what I do. My job is not only to get on an airplane or get in that car and drive to Washington each Monday morning and vote uh, on, on your behalf. My, my job is also to bring you information. And hopefully that's what I've been doing for the last hour, bringing you information. I enjoy it. Uh, it is my honor. It is my pleasure to be your representative in, in Congress. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. This is hard work. Anyone who thinks that this is uh, the life of a celebrity, you have another thought coming. This is hard work and I enjoy it and I appreciate it. And thank you so very much for giving me the privilege. There will be more to come in the weeks and months ahead. God bless all of you. Have a good evening.